So we're at the point of the build now where we're going to fit the staircase. Now we've got all the components, we'll take them in and get it all fitted. So we've created the opening and we've hooked in the staircase, which is basically a dry fit. We just literally hang the top flight over the top of the trimmer there. We've balanced the newel post on the tenon at the bottom and we've just configured the quarter landing, the ball nose and the curtail in place. That enables me to check all the datums. Now the finished floor level to finished floor level are measured from the top where the stairs met to roughly where that newel sat. And that's what, what we decided was the FFL to FFL. Now the floor down below is a floating chipboard floor. What that means is the chipboard is laid directly onto insulation. The insulation underneath the chipboard is laid directly on the slab. And the slab is only as level as the guys that laid it. If it's not level, the chipboard and the insulation will follow it. And that's exactly what the case is here. So if we look at the curtail tread at the bottom, this final corner here, if I just point down to here, this part of the floor here is about nine millimeters high in relation to where the newel post in this corner sits, okay? So it's rising about nine millimeters. If I put a level on the bottom tread here, you can see just how out of level that is. So if I hold that level, we've got about five mil over the width of the level, double that, so it's about sort of 10, nine or 10 mil. So what we need to do, mark round this curtail on the floor, literally mark round it in position here. We'll take it all apart. We'll take the stairs back out. We'll place that tread back on the ground and we'll pack it level and then we'll scribe it in and we'll actually cut that off, scribe that in. We reduce the foot of that string there that will bring that down to the right level and everything will go in really nicely. So it's just that where it contacts the floor at the bottom, um, which will actually sort of correct it all. Now, if we didn't do that, the chances are it might throw the newel out of straight or out of plumb. So that's basically the reason why we need to shoot that in. In the ideal world, you'd never have to shoot a staircase tread in, but when you're putting a new stair in an old building, you have to take an average of the finished floor level to the finished floor level. And I generally take it from where the newel post lands here, because there's a lot of weight coming through there. We don't really want to pack that up if we can help it or reduce it. And I took it from that point there all the way up to where the top of the stairs lands over the stair trimmer. And so that's basically how we did it. So say we hooked it in, we're going to whip it all out, get it all glued and scribed and fixed back in, fixed back to the wall, and then that's pretty much the staircase sorted. I'm also going to be reducing the length of this wall string to sit somewhere in the middle of this architrave. And what I'll also be doing is housing around that architrave here, forming a rebate. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the stairs to move back as close against the existing wall as possible. And I can travel around about 12 millimeters there. So I shall let this out by 12 millimeters there. So I shall take out this just here, all the way through, and that will take that back as well and cut this off there so the string is not coming past that existing door opening. What I also like to do is when I'm fitting a staircase, because the top flight needs a bit of support while we're putting it together, I just make a simple stand up. Now this stand here, it's just made up of some of the timber we pulled out of the ceiling. And the overall height of that is four rises, less the thickness of the tread, okay? So in our case, the rises are around 206 millimeters each time. So four times 206 is 824, less the thickness of the tread, which is around about 24. So that overall stand, I made 800 millimeters. And that enables us to, when we hook the stairs in, before we got the newel on there, we can just slot that underneath. We can pop a couple of screws up into the bottom of the tread so it holds it. And that enables us to move the staircase freely without the newel post having to be in. So we've taken the newel out and we've taken out the components that we dry fitted in the bottom. I've put the curtail back where we'd penciled it in. I've got it on a couple of folding wedges. From the high point over in the corner, which is what we have to scribe in, I'm going to put I'm going to put a level across there and we've made it level there and because it's a large tread we've also 
leveled it back this way as well. So it's no good just leveling the front and not leveling the back. Then what we've got to do is take, this is the distance we've got to shoot it in. That's the sort of deepest point, if you like. And we want to take that down. So whatever that is there, it's around about 10 millimeters. We need to scribe that all the way off there. So it's from nothing up to 10. So you can see the culprit is from about here and then it rises right up to the edge here. So that's basically what we have to take off to straighten it all up, which isn't a great deal, thankfully. And that's it. So when you have a staircase manufactured, they all get manufactured quite quickly. And sometimes it's best to look at the components like here, the riser is just proud of the end of the tread. So what I'm gonna to do to make sure it all goes back into the housing exactly as I want it, is just reduce that as well. It just makes, sometimes makes it a lot easier to fix up. If you're looking at there and you're trying to pull it tight and that's too long. So we'll just tickle that off as well hand saw, back cut it a little bit. So what we need to do is also reduce the foot of this string to reflect this curtail. So we'll set that in the housing here and we'll make sure it's nice and tight. And that's what we're gonna take off. So we need to reduce this also to this seat cut all the way through here. So that's gotta come off there, effectively there as well. Get that cut off. I'm also going to cut it off here, plumb, which is where we're going to sit down in the middle of that architrave, then rebate it back at the back. So we'll get all that done now outside. This staircase is 42.1 degrees pitch. Uh, that's just how it's come out of the manufacturer. So I can actually set my square to that as well. It's the right angle to mark off my cuts. So I can just keep it parallel to that, or indeed I can mark mark the square, set the square up from that. So this will basically mean that that is my seat cut, my correct seat cut coming through there. And that should line up nicely with the riser. So we'll just fine tune that to get it exactly to what their manufacturer is. Clamp the square there and any marks I want to do now is going to be easy. And because the square is a big square, you can actually get all of the marking done without shifting or extending the lines. I'll take that off first.
Now we're going to cut the length off. Which is here. Now I'm going to clean that end up as it's going to be a finished end for painting. So we've cleaned the end up so it's very smooth. This is why I always say carpenters don't need sandpaper because our blades, our planes can actually get you a glassy finish. The last job to do is just house out for the architrave lap, which is this much. So we're going to take that off there, up the top, around the bottom a little. Turn it over, cut that out. So the guys have got the stairs in such a position, they dry fitted the top newel. Now let's show you how we do that. We actually lift the whole thing up and we balance it. So we've actually got a little bit of framework at the bottom, which is braced, fixed to the tread with some CLS, which comes up to the top and that keeps it really nice and solid. So we're not relying on sitting down on this string because there's a lot of short grain there. We don't want to snap that off. That's very flat, fragile. So what Ed's going to do is he's going to work that newel off. It's really tight. He's going to then ease the side of the tenon and make it a bit looser.
So once the top of the stairs is made, so that means we've got the riser, we've got the nosing, we've got the newel, we've cleaned off the dowels, that can actually be lowered down into place now, okay? So if we didn't do this, it's really difficult to get your top riser in. So Lloyd's at the bottom, he's got his frame supporting the bottom, Ed's at the top, and it's just a matter of easing it in until the nosing sits on, and as long as you're sitting flat on the floor, Lloyd, not sitting on any, any cables or, that's it, and then, that's it. Yeah. And that's the stairs, and it's all rested in place, so it doesn't take any fixings just yet. So the nosing sitting on top of the joist. We've got a couple of screws in the back of this timber there, which is going to go and bite into that newel post. And we'll check it for plumb first before we do that, because we might be able to push the newel plumb, screw the screws in, and that will hold it nice and plumb. So Ed will just plumb that up and we'll fix it through the back and that will hold it in position. Then we, we can build all the bottom down there where Lloyd's standing. It's a good idea to mark your dowels like Lloyd's doing here because there's not a lot of meat left on the other side of the newel so when you're banging them through it has been uh, it has actually burst it through so we don't want that to happen so just by having a little pencil mark on if you can't get that positive sound that you sometimes get this listen for the sound and it gets tapped in and it goes this going through the tenon into the other side of the newel and then it's going to sound like with the dead sound that's as far as you can go but it's pulled the shoulders up perfectly now we're just going to give that a quick wipe off in a minute and get that cleaned up so before we actually put the rest of it together we're just going to make sure that this newel is going plumb and so i'm really happy with that all we've done is push the joint together not dowsing it's pulled it up now that means that this is running exactly at the right pitch. If it wasn't, it was laying over. This would also lay over as well. Then what we'll also do, um, once we put it all together, is make sure we pull this side to where it wants to be. So this is the one that's got wobble in it at the moment because it's not got the string and the joint to hold it. So what I'm gonna do with that is pop a little bracket on the floor just to be able to, as a reference here, put some small, 25 mil screws in that. It's got to go that way at the bottom, yeah, Lloyd? Yeah. Tell me when roughly, and I'll put a pencil mark in. Uh, a bit more. Oh. There? No. Happy there? Uh, no, I just want to pencil mark that on the floor. Yeah, there. I just put a pencil mark on there. So that's where we are. I'm just going to put the bracket in. I'm not fixing to the newel. I'm just literally fixing the bracket into the floor. Put a couple of screws where we can get to them. And all this is doing is acting like... There you go, Lloyd. A break, yeah? So now we're somewhere near plumb in both directions. And that's quite important as we build this section around here. Because if we put it all together, screw it all together, we don't get that somewhere in the right field. It's going to hold it out of plumb. There's no way you're going to get that back. So that's super important. Now we just get this bit assembled. It's fairly straightforward um, and that'd be great. We're going to go for it. So it's just a matter of getting some glue on. That's it. Now, a little bit of glue around the joint on the other side. Where it's going to go, just a touch. We don't want to run down that groove too much. A little bit in there. That's it. Get that work that in as well. That's it. Yep, you're in. That's, it, that's good. So what I'm going to do, Lloyd, is just line that with the back of that 
You see the riser there? Yeah. Line that with the back of that. In fact, I'll hold it. You get a screw in underneath. Okay. So go around about here on the angle. Yeah. There. I want it there, right? Yeah. So, yeah. That was good. Nice and gently, yeah. Right, all the way home. All the way home, more. More, 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 more. That's lovely, that's lovely. Same the other end. Not too close to my finger. No, sort of 150 back. 150 back from your yeah. finger. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, that's all we need to do for a minute. Lovely. Yeah. Best to use a bit of glue, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to slide this in now towards the, from the back here. Give a bit of air space there. That's lovely, Lloyd. That's it. Give that a little tap with a mallet. That should be pretty good now. Right, let's get a screw in like you did there. Okay, brilliant. That's good there. Now this is hard to get a wedge in, so again we'll have to do a get a wedge in, put screw in as well. So what I'm gonna do Lloyd is put this put this in here, and then you'll ease yours round. Give mine a little shunt, that's it. Now what we're looking for is a little tap with mallet. Yeah, you tell me when that shoulder closes. Okay. More? Bit more. Get that. It's the last bit. Yeah. Problem. Now I'm going to pull mine up this way, and then you're going to tap the whole thing in. I said, hold it there. I think that will go. I think that's pretty good there. Yeah. This one's moved a little bit when we tapped it forward. So. Well, what I'll do is I'll just temper. I'll just put a wedge in underneath somewhere near it, but not to hold it fully there. All right. That Give it a little off. tiny tap here. Yeah. Gently, gently, that's it, gently, that's good. Right, hold on a minute. I'm going to put a bar behind this string. Just watch that. That's all you need to do, tap into that's in line. That's it. Now just a gentle, gentle taps, just until you see them go in the groove. Square touch. Now in. A bit more. A bit more. Sit. All the way around. That's it. Now, what we'll do, we'll get a couple of shims behind there to hold it while we clamp it all up and push it towards you, yeah? Yeah? Yep. I'll give it a bit more, ready? Give the curtail a tap towards me at the very back, this one. This one. The bottom one, yeah. So, so it's, the housing's coming up. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Not 
nice and gently, all right? Did I say when? <clears throat> Go on, mate. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. go on. That's it. Lovely. All right, pretty good. That's it. Now, rubber mallet. That's it. Just tap that back now until it's flushed. Or if I put my weight on it, see, look at that one there, yeah? Yep. Yep, that's good. All right? Yeah, wanna... uh, yeah, it's good. Do you want to get that riser in while you're there? Yeah. Can you see all right? Yeah. With yeah. the glue, glue everything. So the back of the tread. Back of this Here. Yeah. Up the groove, up there. Now it's all up to you now to get it in yeah. and up and into the groove. I'm going to let go. All right, got it. Go in and back. Now back. That's it. Now up. Right up, yeah? And you've got to hold it like really, really stiff and hard. Yeah? Yeah. Tell That's me. Right, look, your side. It's fine. You're going to go middle first, are you? Yeah. All right, I'll push down and you can hold it up. Yeah. And then I'm going to get you to wedge it, Lloyd. Yeah. On three sides. That's what it is, a bit of fat there. So it's, it's, right, so it's like that, yeah? So it goes in the string side, is the glue side, obviously. Okay. So you're going to do the right, this riser. Yeah. Top one. Pop it in hard against the string, up to the top. Do you want a hammer? I've got one, thanks. All right. Give it a little tap. Go on, mate. That's good. Looking good. good. Happy? Yeah, go on. A bit more. Is it clear of the bottom of the tread below? Yeah. Good. I'll give you the one. Uh, oh, no. Sorry. How about now? Uh, it's got maybe five more mils. That'll uh, probably be all right. You'll catch the next one. I'll give you a... Um, I'll give you the one for the tread below. And what we're going to do with that one is, because it, it settles for, further forward, if you know what I mean, yeah. you'll be able to bang it so far, and then we'll use a stick to knock it in with. So it's going to go like that, Lloyd, yeah? Yeah. That's in this tread, yeah? What, the same one? Yeah, that tread there, so yeah. the ball nose tread. Or the one just below, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how's that feel? That's good, it's going a bit. Do you want a block to bang it with or you're right? It's alright. How's that? Yeah, it feels good. Okay, good. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. Good, that's gone together a treat. The actual first fixed part of the staircase is finished. Uh, we fixed it back to the existing stud wall. We've got all the bottom in, the curtail, the ball nose, the bottom newel. Um, and it went quite nicely. It's actually not bad for square, this room. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful fit. Another simple installation of this stair box staircase. So yeah. that's brilliant. All the guys have got to do now is get the glue blocks on the underneath and then we're, we're done for now until we put the glass and the handrails in and everything else.